10 minutes starting now. So today I wanted to talk about my own experiences with cultivating self-empowerment. And for me, a big part of it has been about giving one's power away. Like the idea of self-empowerment and giving your power away. It's mm. like self-empowered and giving that power externally from yourself. For me, the idea of giving one's power away can come in many different forms and can show up in many different ways, but especially comes in with relationships in particular, all kinds of different relationships. Um, but really what it, what it boils down to when it comes to giving one's power away, it's giving with expectation to receive something in return. I'll take, for example, a relationship, and I can use an example for myself. Let's say that you're with a romantic partner who you're kind of afraid of them having like an outburst or like a fit of like just a very intense moment where they kind of lash out at you for some reason, for something that you say or something that you need or your own needs, basically. And so then... In, re in response to, in, to, to kind of like counteract that, for example, in that story example, uh, for, in my own experience, it would be like, oh, okay, I'll just kind of like agree and just say yes. I'm like, okay, yes, dear, it's okay, dear, yes, that's fine, dear. Just, and like kind of agreeing to it uh, to kind of keep the peace in that way. And that expectation there is like giving of myself something that I might not necessarily want to be giving away, in this case, it's my power or my, my uh, condolence. Yeah, my giving away my agreeance in that way and expecting something in return. But this giving, a power, giving my power away in this regard is based around a kind of trauma. It's based around some kind of fear. And let's say particularly in this example with this abusive partner who you're afraid is gonna lash out at you unless you kind of bow down to their wishes and what they want and they, what they need, it's the fear of like being abused. So it's like, oh, okay, I'm just gonna say yes, just so that I don't get abused because I know that that hurts. <laughs> so I'm gonna avoid getting abused. And so I'm gonna give my power away. But that doesn't really help me in the long run because the more I do that, the more I'm gonna resent them I really resent myself, but also in a sense resent them because I'm doing something I don't really want to be doing. <laughs> it's not in alignment with my highest self in that way. So what would be a good example to remedy a situation like that where I'm giving my power away because I'm expecting to receive something in return? In this case, I'm expecting to receive security within the relationship. And it's, yeah, it's not just abuse either. The security in the relationship, the expectation there of giving my power away could be also, I'm afraid that if I don't do as what they tell me to do, that I might lose the relationship, for example. They might go off with someone else or they might they'll be even more abusive or, you know, it's, it's abandonment, rejection and abuse. It's all the different traumas, essentially. So to remedy that, what is a good remedy? Well, really putting it simply, how I would put it is just to stop giving one's power away. <laughs> but how do, you, how do you do that? How it has helped me, and this has helped with my own kind of sense of self-empowerment, I suppose, is just knowing that if those around you cannot stand you being in your power, are they really in support of your best interests or just their own best interests? And that's the thing with a relationship. If one individual in the relationship is always having to have it their way, are they really, is that really a 50-50 relationship? Is that really even and equal in that way? I don't think so. So if you can stand tall with respect to yourself and say enough is enough when appropriate, then someone who truly cares about your well-being as well as their own 
will honor your needs. And if they can't honor your needs, and if they continue to abuse you, and if they continue to, to run away from the relationship when they can't get their way, then instead of giving your power away, why not then be self-empowered and realize, hey, I can be okay on my own. I don't need to be in this unequal relationship. Another aspect that I wanted to talk about in regards to giving one's power away is also the idea of giving your authority away. This is just a different version of a different aspect of giving one's power away. And, and as I said, there's so many different versions of, of how we give our power away. But it, you know, it's always, almost always coming down into relationship. So for example, we're giving other people's words more authority than our own. Let's say, for example, when I'm in my early teens, I told my dad, hey, dad, I want to be an actor because that really excites me. And then dad's like, actually, I think you should be a doctor because you're going to have a secure job and you're going to be able to bring security to your family and your future family. And I think that's better for you because it's safer. And then that kid, that younger kid is then like, oh, OK, wow, I've just been shot down. The thing that really excited me is has now been crushed because this this father, my father, who I see as an authority over me, has told me that that is not my path. And I believe him because I see him as being more authoritative than I am of myself. And of course, children and parents have that dynamic where the child does need to see their parent as an authority. It's a very important part of the, of the childhood experience. But that, that child's father in that regard has then left an imprint on that child who then goes about his life, the rest of his life growing up, believing that he can't necessarily follow what he feels is good for him to follow. What he, what he is excited about, he can't do that because he's not good enough to do it for whatever reason. It has to be someone else who dictates to him what he should or should not be doing. So, and of course, what's the remedy here though, in this way, in this, in this particular scenario of giving other people's words more authority than our own? Well, I'm gonna put this simply and just say, it's taking your power back again. It's exactly the same, but how do we take our power back in this kind of situation? Well, if we, if we can see those other people as less of an authority over us by taking that authority that we had once given to them and give the authority back to ourselves. That can certainly help to start with. It's because in that scenario, if a perceived authority figure has said something unsupportive towards us, something unsupportive towards what we feel personally excited about pursuing, then we need to break that chain. We need to be able to break that cycle going forwards in our lives so that we don't have to be stuck in that pattern of thinking that we're not capable or empowered in making our own decisions and what feels good to us. And even if some other people, especially our parents or those around us who do often see that something may or may not be bad for us or good for us. We often then still need to find out for ourselves whether it's good or bad for us, regardless of what they say. So, yeah, taking that authority that we gave to others and taking that authority and giving it back to ourselves and then bringing in supportive, reinforcing words and thoughts that counteract the unsupported beliefs we'd prior taken on from these authority figures in our early life or throughout our lives. So yeah, rebalancing any harsher, unsupportive ideas that we've been holding on to and identifying ourselves with and starting to come in with something more positive and reinforcing that lifts us up and helps, helps our head be held higher and our heart stronger and just having more self-assuredness in ourselves. Reinforce what was once broken. 
Thank you.